Good morning. This is Christ the King Sunday. Advent's coming up next week, and today our scripture is Matthew 25. Been in the same chapter for three weeks now. <laughs> Matthew 25. Today we're in verses 31 to 46, so y'all know the drill. Pause, read the scripture, then come on back with me. C.S. Lewis once wrote, Our life comes to us moment by moment. One moment disappears before the next comes along, and there is very little room in each one. That is what time is like, he says. Moment by moment, and there is very little room in each. Doesn't that ring true? I just find it impossible <laughs> almost every day to understand where time has gone that day but it goes. And too often we lose the moments in search of the big milestones. We lose the small moments. I don't feel like I've known what day, month, or year it is since 2020. <laughs> Seriously. The pandemic's costliest casualty was all sense of time, at least for me. Um, this has been a week when many folks like to step back, take stock, um, and look at all the moments and milestones that have occurred over the last year of our lives. The love and the loss, the celebrations and the mourning. On tough days, I think of the mourning more than the celebration. I think of the loss more than the love on tough days. It's an easy trap to fall into for the pain of loss and mourning can can just be consuming. It begins in a moment, but it can take hold and quickly outstay its welcome before we know it time gets away from us. But that's on a bad day. And most days are not bad days. Most days, more than anything else, when we look back on the moments of our lives, we are overwhelmed with gratitude to God for the many blessings that we have received. The colors of the sunsets. My goodness, did you see the vivid colors last night? The joke that still makes you laugh anytime it crosses your mind's eye. The phone call from a friend that comes at just the right time when you needed it. The hug from someone who knows what you've been going through. These are the moments that make our lives. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering, oh, okay, but what in the world does that have to do with today's scripture? <laughs> to me, these moments have everything to do with today's scripture. And today's scripture, especially falling on Christ the King Sunday. Why? Well, because today's scripture, Matthew 25, 31 to 46, it is about judgment. Judgment. Some of the worst moments of our lives are the moments when we feel judged. And there's only one thing powerful enough to overcome judgment. And I don't think it's what you think. It's not what I first think. This is a, an understanding I've come to after years of considering this prayerfully. I think the only thing more powerful than judgment is gratitude. Now, in today's reading, Jesus says that a day of judgment will come. Now, we in the Presbyterian Church talk about judgment about as often as we turn down an opportunity to eat at a potluck. <laughs> Not very often. <laughs> um, but Jesus says the day's going to come. And on that day, he'll separate the sheep from the goats. Based on what? Well, based on who lived the gospel, essentially. That's the short answer. If you fed the hungry, you lived the gospel. If you clothed the naked, you lived the gospel. If you welcomed the stranger, you lived the gospel. And if you didn't, well, then you didn't live the gospel. Does that make you feel judged? It makes me feel judged. Doggone right, I think it makes everyone feel judged. It makes us think, why do I have plenty of food in my fridge when others are going hungry? How can I enjoy a 
quiet life here in the hills of West Virginia when there are families who are trying to survive a war right now. Thinking about others' situations inevitably leads to self-judgment. Those moments that creep in and can consume us. I haven't done enough this year, we may say to ourselves. I had really good intentions. There's so many people that need help. I wish there was something I could do. Those are all good, important thoughts, but I think we've got it all backwards. I think we've got judgment and gratitude all backwards. We think that we avoid judgment by doing good things. And if we do enough good things, we won't be judged by helping others. But that's not how it works. When we practice gratitude, that's when we overcome judgment. Let me say that again because I know that's a little bit of a foreign, unusual thought. When we practice gratitude, we overcome judgment. I say that because gratitude is an all-consuming fire. When we operate from a position of thankfulness, we see everything as a blessing and an opportunity. There is literally no room for judgment left. And that's the only way we get past it because it creeps in so easily. There has to be no room left for it and the only way there's no room left for it is if we are continually guided from a position of gratitude. Gratitude overcomes judgment. Judgment of ourselves, judgment of others. We just don't have the time or energy for it because we are so focused on gratitude. Now what's Jesus doing in this passage today? talking to us about judgment and separating the sheep from the goats? Is he guilting us into a more quote-unquote Christian lifestyle in today's passage? No, I, I don't think so. Is he waving judgment before our eyes to scare us into doing the right thing? I, I don't think so. Is he threatening hellfire and brimstone? I really don't think so. I think he is simply showing us the fruits of a life of gratitude. It's just showing us. No judgment, no guilt, just fact. If you live a life of gratitude, here's what happens. You will live the gospel. If you don't, you won't. No guilt, no judgment, just fact. What he wants for us is to practice a life of gratitude because in so doing, every breath is a chance to glorify God. Today is Christ the King Sunday, as I mentioned before, when we remember that Jesus reconciled us to him, not by our actions, but by his. That is a very important distinction. He reconciled himself to us, not by our actions, but by his. That's what makes him king. He's our king. He died for our sins. He did his job. Our job is to live out a life of gratitude in response. Because when we do... It overcomes every judgment holding us back. You know what it's like to be held back by the judgments of others. When people tell you that you're not good enough. When people tell you that you're not smart enough. When people tell you that you're not brave enough. When people tell you that you're not holy enough. When people tell you that you're not faithful enough. When people tell you that you're not enough. Don't you know what it feels like to be held back by the judgments of others? People who think they know everything about you. <laughs> Remember what C.S. Lewis wrote. Our life comes to us moment by moment. One moment disappears before the next comes along. And there is very little room in each. That is how time works. Time is precious. Don't waste it on people's nonsense. Don't waste it on their judgments of you. Tell them God will be the judge of you. And for heaven's sake, don't you waste it on judging them. Let God be the judge of them. Let us spend our precious time operating from a position of gratitude. 
and see how that changes absolutely everything else. It changes everything. Let's practice that right now. Will you say a little prayer with me? Let's pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the moment that we share with you and with our church family in prayer. It is only a moment, and yet it's connected to the entirety of our existence alongside you. Our lives are a string of moments blessed by you in ways that we can't even begin to understand, which is why we place our trust and our gratitude in you, O oh Lord. It allows us to see the world from your position, where judgment is overcome by gratitude, where loss is overcome by love, where sin is overcome by grace, where death is overcome by life, where we are overcome by you. We thank you, God, for your presence. We thank you for your promise. We thank you for this moment we share with you in worship, and we pray in your holy name. Amen.